Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, Michael J, and I'm back again with another video, and today I'll be presenting my top 10 favorite science fiction movies of all time. As the usual, before I start this list, here are my honorable mentions. The Empire Strikes Back, Gattaca, Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and Donnie Darko. Now, without further ado, let's get straight to the list. Starting off with number 10, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I mean, come on, do I really, really need to explain how fucking magnificent Terminator 2 Judgment Day is? Simply put, it's one, if not the greatest action movie of all time terminator 2 transcends all limits of a spectacular blockbuster by having a more compelling story from the original extraordinary visual effects incredible action set pieces fueled by emotion and featuring one of the best acting ensembles in sci-fi cinema it really sucks that the entire terminator franchise went down the toilet after this because this definitely would have been a much fitting conclusion to the franchise but bottom line terminator 2 judgment day is a sci-fi action masterpiece coming at number nine i am legend with this post-apocalyptic thriller being a loose adaptation of the 1954 novel, you have Will Smith as Dr. Robert Neville, who's the apparent sole survivor living in New York City who struggles to find a cure to a global virus that's responsible for decimating most of humanity into these, like, nocturnal vampire zombie creatures. The movie explores the idea of what happens to someone who's just totally isolated and what's left in the world, especially the way we get to see the relationship between Dr. Neville and his dog. And although, despite the disastrous theatrical ending, even though I usually just stick to the alternate ending which is far more interesting and i also will never understand why they replaced it but other than that i am legend was such a gut-wrenching one-man show which proved that will smith is capable of carrying an entire film on his own coming at number eight mad max fury road one of the best action movies in recent memory, Mad Max Fury Road is a non-stop adrenaline from start to finish. With Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron as the lead protagonist, this movie is packed with dazzling stunt work, breathtaking cinematography, and having some of the best set pieces ever put to screen. Fury Road takes viewers racing through a scorched wasteland with amped up war boys, fire breathing guitars, and so much more. It's a staggering technical achievement that felt like a precious gift from God when it was released back in the summer of 2015 because I haven't seen anything like it. Coming at number 7, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Now, is Revenge of the Sith a perfect movie? Nah, it's definitely far from it, but does it have some of the best moments of the Star Wars franchise? Hell yeah, it does. Whatever how people feel about it, there's really no denying the epic confrontations and the emotional power that takes place in this movie. It has so many incredible moments from the execution of Order 66 with the clones turning against the Jedi generals, which is heartbreaking, and even Obi-Wan and Anakin going head-to-head -head on Mustafar, which most people argue is the best Star Wars lightsaber duel of all time. This movie does such a brilliant job of really showcasing the downfall of Anakin Skywalker and the rise of Darth Vader, especially with Hayden Christensen who finally got something great to do with him really making Anakin Skywalker appear as the sympathetic tragic hero the way how George Lucas intended and while sure some of the aspects in this movie can come off to be a bit too campy at times but nonetheless Revenge of the Sith is much better than people give it credit for coming at number six Inception I'll never forget watching Inception for the first time and to be honest this movie really confused the hell out of me I remember how I always just saw it as this big gimmick movie and how I couldn't really understand the concept of it so it kind of took me a while for inception to win me over within like my seventh viewing of the movie i kind of said to myself okay now i fully get it and i think that's the beauty of inception is that it's supposed to fuck with your mind because that's what makes it great with this movie having a brilliant cast led by leonardo dicaprio the story revolves around the ability to slip into people's dreams dreams within dreams stealing secrets and the consequences that come with it i could go on about inception all day but overall it's just an awesome movie full of twists and turns and it definitely deserves all the praise it gets coming at number five the hunger games catching fire Fire. Catching Fire is without question my favorite of the Hunger Games movies. With this being the second addition to the franchise, Catching Fire took everything that made the first movie great and just turned it all up to 11. The movie has better pacing, the stakes were higher, and the cast was even more stacked. It's one of those rare adaptations that was a huge upgrade from the books where you have Katniss Everdeen being pushed to her limit as she faces the biggest challenge of her life. This movie pretty much does everything a great sequel should do by not only expanding but improving upon everything from the original with having a more emotional core to it, better acting, Action, and even having brilliant characters like Finnick O'Dair, Joanna Mason, and even having the late Philip Seymour Hoffman as Plutarch Heavensby. Coming at number 4, Alita Battle Angel. Now I'm going to be dead honest, Alita Battle Angel was a movie that I thought was just going to be bland just by judging the trailers, but then I relented and decided to give this movie a chance and after watching it, I ended up loving it. To me, this movie is probably like the best adaptation of an anime that I have ever seen. This was such a gorgeous movie to look at because it has some of the best CGI usage that I've ever seen in a movie in like ever because it had such a brilliant way of combining live action and CGI onto one which not only made it look visually stunning but also realistic as well. I remember watching this and just instantly 
falling in love with the character of Alita, especially with her amazing character development. Rosa Salazar just gave such an incredible performance as the character of Alita because this movie always gave me a reason to root for her. From how likable she was, how she was super selfless, how she was super brave, and how courageous she was. Because she always had like this desire to always keep fighting. Even despite coming up short, she refuses to give up, which shows that she really has like the heart of a warrior. Plus, it also had incredible action, especially when it came to the motorball sequences. Well, it's far from a perfect movie, but nonetheless, Alita Battle Angel was one hell of an experience, and I really, really hope we get a sequel to this. Coming at number three, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. While The Empire Strikes Back, for a good reason, is viewed as like the high point of the Star Wars franchise. However, with that being said, people can never underestimate how important and how impactful the original movie is. Because not only did it launch the biggest property in the history of pop culture, not only did it change the way how movies were made, it changed the way how science fiction was viewed by the masses. A New Hope is such a timeless tale about good versus evil that would introduce so many beloved characters like Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Han Solo, Chewbacca, the beautiful princess Leia and one of the most iconic movie villains of all time, Darth Vader. While most people nowadays could look at this movie and say that it's dated, but other than that, A New Hope is such a brilliant sci-fi flick. It's George Lucas's biggest staple on filmmaking and it pretty much just represents what blockbuster filmmaking is all about. From our runner-up at number two, Blade Runner. Now, Blade Runner is a movie that's way ahead of its time. It's definitely Ridley Scott's most beautiful looking movie because everything about this movie is just magnificent. From the cinematography, the visual effects, the music, the gritty future. Even with it being released in 1982, it looks better than most movies that you see today, which says a lot. While Harrison Ford is the one that mostly anchors this entire movie, the film also features two brilliant villains in Roy Batty and Pris. But they're also more than that because even with the two condoning horrible acts to achieve their goal, they're complicated characters who want to live just like human beings, which makes them very sympathetic, especially Roy Batty when it came to that amazing time to die speech that he gives by the end of the movie. Blade Runner was so groundbreaking for its time, and while sure the movie may have been a box office flop upon its release, over time it's been held as a cult classic in both neo noir and science fiction. And coming at number one, Star Wars Episode 6 Return of the Jedi. Yeah, this shouldn't be surprising for most of y'all who've been following my channel for the longest time because you already know how much I adore Return of the Jedi. It's not just my favorite sci fi movie of all time. Time, not just my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, it's one of my all-time favorite films, period. And while sure it's well regarded as the weakest of the original Star Wars trilogy, but make no mistake about it, it's still a pretty damn good movie because it does the rare thing for a trilogy closer. It picks up all the loose story strands and offers a properly satisfying ending to everything that came before it. It's packed with some of the best moments of the original trilogy where you have so many things happening at once, from Lando Clarissian leading the charge in the space battle, to the ground battle with Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Princess Leia battling the stormtroopers with the help of the Ewok. And of course the magnificent throne room sequence with the dynamic created between Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and Emperor Palpatine. All of that is just so massively executed without feeling confusing at all. I could honestly gush about Return of the Jedi all day, every day like I've done numerous times. But in conclusion, it is my number one favorite sci-fi movie of all time. And that's the list. What are your favorite sci-fi movies of all time? Feel free to comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. I'm your boy Mike J. And peace.